Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and a fusion design, in this case we're going to make a 3D printable sphere, that you can see the image here. The inspiration for making this video comes from uh, this image that's posted on Reddit, I should say that I have already made this design before I saw this image, so I know how to do it, and I'd like to share it with you. So the question in Reddit was of course, how do I make this shape, and I'd like to show you one more image, just for you who are interested in geometry. This is like, here is the edge we want to cut later, and if you have a look at this outer shape, you might recognize the spherical. So let's go back. Here is like my sphere, I needed this for a small project, so I wanted to make this. You can see the layer lines are in a good direction. We avoid these strange layer, sharp layer shifts close to the top and stuff like that. It's of course based on two symmetrical parts. We're also going to have a look in the slicer. It looks like this. And if you have a look here, you can see there's very little of the model that's touching the print bed. So I added a brim, and to secure it even more, I added some supports in Prusa Slicer. We can do that under support material and enforce support for the first lay number of layers. In this case, I made 20. So I get something to keep the model in place. Because if you're only going to place this on a build plate, the model is going to be knocked off. I can tell you that. So, let's get over to Fusion, our CAD software, and hide our borders like that. So, we have an empty design space. The file is saved. Now, I'm going to start by creating a component. If you only want to make the model, you can skip this step. I'm making the component because I want to later show you the possibility to inspect and interference to check that our design is correct. So, I'm going to right-click, new component. I'm going to name it. Let's name it... Sphere. Um, yeah, let me do that section like that. With half of it, I'm gonna open up, make sure our components is active, and we're gonna create our first sketch. Let's do it from the front. Simply, of course, seeing the keyboard for a circle, we're gonna make a sphere, so we need a circle. I can name my uh, parameters. I want to do that. Not necessary. You can find them in the change parameter. We'll do that or edit the sketches. Just doing for the fun of it. Going to move the dimensions slightly out of the way. Basically, I don't want to see the dimensions. If you get confused, things are in the way, just hide the dimensions for now. Line. Make a line straight down. We need a center axis for a sphere. I'm going to put it here. Now I'm going to put hit L once more for line. I'm going to start out here. Go all the way in here. Make sure I hit this line here. Then I'm going to hold down the mouse button, this gives me the possibility to make an arc, drop it here, and the line straight over to here. Now you can change uh, different uh, call it, constraints if you want to do that, like I said, you can change that horizontal, vertical, or whatever you want. We can keep it like it is. The important thing, I want to make these two concentric, or I can use it coincident with the center of the arc and the center of the circle going to need two more lines, L on the keyboard, and switch to construction from this point into the center point, from here into the center point, and I'm going to do it perpendicular. So these two lines are going to be 90 degrees, and we have a fully defined sketch. We don't need to do anything more. If you want to change our sketch, of course, we can open up. I name by parameter, so let's see if I change that to 70, nothing breaks, down back to 60, nothing breaks. Good. So I'm going to finish sketch, and of course I can open up and see I have a fully defined sketch. So my first tool is going to be a revolve, because I want to create the sphere. What profiles I can select, and I like to select these two, just like the other side too. Axis, of course, the center, and we have a sphere. Nothing strange about that. Now we like to cut things out, and we have, let's have a look at the image once again. If we have a look at this, these faces are meeting basically, and this needs to be concentric, basically this face is always pointed to the center, or you can think of it that this face is always perpendicular or normal to the outer face. What tools do we have in Fusion that can do that? We have a shell tool, or you can use thicken on a surface, it's up to you. But we need to split out the faces, so I'm going to go in Modify, Split Face, select the Sphere Face, what splitting tool, I'm going to select my little sketch line and arc here. You can see it extends it outwards automatically. We really don't need that here, but just be careful that we split other things. Hit OK. 
For visibility, let's say we have one body. Let's hide the sketch, it makes it easier to see. Now I'm going to make the shell. Important here, turn off tangent chain, or you would just select the complete sphere. I want to select one face, this here. And we're going to do an inside thickness. So let's call this wall, just to name it. And let's do it five millimeters. And by that, we have basically made our design. We don't need to do more, it's only three features. The problem is, of course, if we want to free print this, like I showed you in the Prusa slicer, it's very little touching uh, the build plate. And if you import this model like it is now, it tries to stand the model, or you have to rotate it so it stands on this basically zero edge. And most slicer will cry and complain. So what we can do, we can do modify and do a chamfer and select this edge and make it like 0 0.4 and we get a small flat face and I also like to do the inside because any free FDM 3D printer will always like round corners I would avoid shape sharp edges like this so I can do this one millimeter inside makes it a bit easier for the 3D printer to work with or we can do the same as the outside gonna hit OK this of course will create a small edge we can have that in my image you can see there's a small recess here all around. You can make a part of the design intent or you can hide it with some kind of filler. So we have made this. Can we give it some color? We can. So we made our first component. So well, we made the design. This is all we need to do. We can take this and copy it. But I like to check my design. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump up to my base here or the root of the browser. Click on this, right click and do copy and then right click top level and do paste i don't want to do paste new paste new makes a new one which is not connected paste paste makes the same component there's a link to the first one and of course it's in a quite bad position because it ends up in the same place we can do a small trick here we're going to turn on our origin so we can see that because we can see that the pivot point is not the region point the region point is the center of the sphere so we're going to set pivot set pivot select a region point remember to click done on set pivot when you're done so now we can take this and we can rotate it in this direction do it 180 degrees and we can rotate it in this direction 90 degrees and we have made our little design you can see i have hidden edge and i can of course hide them i like to see them when i do designs like this let's hide the region once again so what was the tool I wanted to use? That is inspect and interference. In interference, we select components, so this component and this component, and ask it to do a compute. And we get no interference detected. <coughs> that is totally correct because they are not in interfering or overlapping. But I can do a second thing. I can have the same two components and do include coincident faces and ask it to do the compute. You will say there's no interference, but it's telling us that these faces are touching. Let's see if I can move it around. And that is totally correct because they exist in the same place. You might want to do an offset face and my freedom printer has no problem. It snaps together, but you might want to move a face. So this is very nice tool to check things, but think everything is correct. I'm going to hit OK. We have a model back and we can hide the second one, have a look at the first one, and let's see if we can break the model. I haven't tried this fully. Let's see if we can open up, we can change the walls. I'm gonna hide one component of the course so we can see if we change the walls to six millimeters, we get a thicker model. I can make a larger one, 70, or maybe one, whoops, 100. Let's activate the other component like that, and it updates both. We can do it with both visible, Let's do 60 once again, and we have a parametric model. Of course, you only need to model half of it. So with that said, I hope you have learned something from this video. With that said, take care, take care, see you around, and goodbye.